the planet Earth to understand the concept of war. I'm in Syria. I'm confused. Why are humans fighting? There's a revolution against the president of Syria, Bashar Assad. The vast majority of the country is a different set of Islam, which hates his minority sect. So how did he win the Syrian presidential election if he's a hated minority? You think Syria has fair elections? They couldn't even host a show like American Idol. Welcome to Syrian Idol. Vote for me! I have the best voice! La la! I have the best voice! How did he come to power then? His father passed him the power. This is his father, Hafez Assad. He took over the country using brutal military methods. What is going on with his head shape? He couldn't open up Syria, but he ripped open his mother's vagina. So is Bashar Assad as brutal as his father? Well, Syrians were promised reform, and since he was trained in an ophthalmology school in England, people had an expectation of a more modern, democratic society. Instead, he gave a brutal, violent crackdown of his own people, and now there's a shortage of doctors. Well, actually, he is a doctor, so maybe he did it to drum up business. Ah! Uh, we need a doctor. Why did people get inspired to rebel now? Well, there's a movement called Arab Spring, in which revolutions came up in Northern Africa and spread to the Middle East. Both me and the conservative agree Arab Spring was caused by America's policies. We stress different parts of it, though. To me, the most important part is WikiLeaks revealed that America funded and armed corrupt dictators. For example, in Tunisia, where they were literally our puppets. Maybe that explains Tunisia's flag. If corporate America directs their acting, their whole government is like a Hollywood movie. DreamWorks Pictures presents Tunisian Independence. And I think Arab Spring was caused by the Federal Reserve. One of the biggest complaints of protesters was the price of food. This is a chart comparing New York Federal Reserve bond buying, aka printing money, in the pink, compared to global food prices, the commodity index, in blue. Tunisians started revolting right here, when the cost of food became unbearable. They just want to live the American dream. Obesity. So the American media has to spin this with propaganda. They won't say, yeah, we armed corrupt dictators and printed so much money the average person starved to death. Instead they go, Arab Spring was caused by social media. If you only watched the mainstream news, you'd think Arab Spring was part of Twitter's IPO commercials. I hide my face during combat, but I post my position with the new Never Assad hashtag. Multiple studies have shown that rebels in Egypt and Tunisia use traditional methods of communication to rebel, like text and call. Commander, we don't know what to do. They're not even posting their positions on Twitter. But then how do they get followers? The mainstream news is biased. Ironically, only on social media can you learn Arab Spring wasn't caused by social media. So is Arab Spring the primary motivation for Syria's rebellion? Well, Arab Spring showed people that change was possible, but I think the real driving force behind the Syrian war is different sects of Islam. This is a map of Sunnis and Shiites in the Middle East. The dark blue is Shiite. For example, Iran. The light blue is Sunni, like Saudi Arabia. Iraq is half and half. Sounds like a great place to set up democracy. Okay, so Syria is a proxy war between the biggest Sunni and Shiite nations. So the Syrian war isn't being fought by Syrians? Right, rather than actually fight each other in their own countries, they each send to Syria weapons, arms, and some fighters. America's mad at both these countries for arming extremists. America also arms rebels. The only difference between the moderates we arm and the extremists is not religion, but whether or not they like America. I'd love to see these training sessions. Let's go over the combat drill again. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light. 
Sunnis and Shiites are fighting over who should rule after Muhammad died, so it's really more of a fight about politics. They're fighting about politics? That's stupid. Shut up, you poopy head. Yeah, but how can Sunnis and Shiites fight about politics? So if they fund violence, it's terrorism. But if you fund violence, it's a super PAC. So now that you understand Sunnis and Shiites poorly, there's only one more group you need to understand, and that's Alawite. Viewers at home are like, I gotta learn a third Islamic sect. I mean, this plot line is harder to follow than a Mission Impossible movie. I can't figure out who's on what side. And this message might self-destruct. This is easy to understand. The guy we've been talking about the whole time, the dictator of Syria, he's an Alawite. Alawite sides with Shiite. There are two ways you can remember this. The first is that Syria and Iran are the two countries that hate America, so it makes logical sense that they'd be allies. Hey, what's your astrology sign? Bush's axis of evil. Me too, we're soulmates. The second way is the conflict we just mentioned earlier. Sunnis and Shiites are fighting over Muhammad's political lineage. Alawites and Shiites, although different religions, both agree on the same branch, the same lineage from Muhammad. Well, how is Alawite different from Shiite? Alawites are typically less strict than Shiites. For example, an Alawite can drink and the women don't have to cover their heads. So if you thought Iran's government was stable, let's add horny men and vodka. In fact, Alawites are so relaxed with their restrictions that some people don't consider them Muslim at all. And by some people, he means the Sunni Islamists who are trying to kill them. Because they're still Muslim to me. I disagree that this war is primarily about religion. So this is a map of oil production wells in the Middle East. As you can see, Saudi Arabia, Iran, and Iraq are the biggest oil producers. Only a liberal would leave ISIS off the map but put Halliburton on it. I'll explain why Halliburton is to blame. So Syria actually has a low amount of oil, but it is in the perfect location for a pipeline. And that pipeline likely would come from Iraq. The energy industry could care less about the murder of local populations. In fact, Halliburton pipelines could transport the bodies like Futurama. Will you at least admit religion plays a role? Oil isn't the only factor. There's also natural gas, and what a coincidence, Saudi Arabia and Iran are the two countries that would be competing for pipelines through Syria. This war isn't about religion, unless you count our dependence on fossil fuels as worship. I think the Federal Reserve bankers primarily drive foreign policy and that the oil companies are second. See, Iraq and Saudi Arabia sell oil in US dollars. So this props up the dollar, and the more of it that gets to market through Syria's pipelines, the better off that the Fed is. It's said that the Syrian terrorist rebel groups think they're actually resisting America. Get your death to America signs. We're selling them in US dollars only. That's right. Step right up. We accept treasuries. Loving them treasuries on the death to America signs. Maybe that explains why Federal Reserve bankers put in God we trust on money. So when we fight over currency, they can go, it's a war about religion. I have the best voice. Vote for me. Unfortunately, we're out of time for this episode. Can you please summarize? To summarize, Arab Spring is a group of revolutions in Northern Africa and the Middle East as a result of America propping up corrupt dictators, as well as the Federal Reserve creating rampant food inflation. While Tunisia and Egypt were puppets of America, Syria's dictator was not. So America purposely had Sunnis and Shiites fight each other to destabilize Syria for regime change. And within this chaos, ISIS formed and fights both the rebels and Assad. In part two, we'll discuss arming Syrian rebels. Make sure to subscribe and let's learn together.